Hi, my name's Rob Ross Russell, Dr. Ross Russell. I am the Director of Studies in Medicine at Peterhouse. I'm a paediatrician up at Addenbrooke's Hospital, but my responsibilities in college uh, are to interview and select students, uh, to organise uh, supervisions over the first three years for the uh, preclinical undergraduate students and to do some of those supervisions myself uh, and also to look after the clinical students uh, when they move on to Admirals for the second half of their training. So it's a great honour to be here today who have been asked to do some mock interviews for uh, the blogs or vlogs that uh, Jade and uh, Kubukani do for Asclepium and what I'm going to do uh, in the next moments is to bring in a student for an interview uh, we're going to do a mock interview. The students, the two students I'm uh, interviewing, um, have both volunteered uh, to do this. One is in the second year, one is in the third year. Um, and I'm very grateful for them for coming and reliving the uh, terrors of the uh, interview. And what we want to do with this is to give you a taste of what an interview might feel like uh, when you come up, hopefully to Cambridge, hopefully to Peterhouse, to apply to do medicine. Uh, the student I'm about to interview is Patrick Boutros. He has just finished his second year uh, preclinical studies um, and it is a pleasure to have him back to uh, interview him again. Uh, Patrick, nice to meet you. Yeah, that's it. Come on through. It's nice to take a seat over there. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Patrick. Jay Stevenson. Oh, so yeah. Come and sit over here if you would. Uh, so uh, I'm Dr. Ross Russell, Rob Ross Russell. I'm the Director of Studies here at Peter House. Yeah, really nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Is this your first or your second interview? Uh, my first, actually. Your first yeah. interview. Okay. So the format is we have half an hour of your precious time, and we're going to fire some questions at you. I will start, and then Great. Okay. Jay Stevenson will finish, um, and we'll have a series of questions. At the end of which, you'll get a chance to. Ask any questions you might have, but you don't need to if you yeah. don't wish to. No, great. Okay. okay. So, how did you get here today? Uh, by train, actually. You came by train. So, on your own, or did you have yeah, on my own. come with you? Yeah, okay. on my own. So, they're all fretting at home, are they? Yeah. And whereabouts do you come from? London. London. Yeah. Okay. So, not that bad. Not too bad. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, we'll, we'll crack straight into it. I want to talk a bit about breathing. What do you know about breathing? How do we breathe? Well, um, our lungs create a pressure differential, which allows air in. So the lungs create it, do they? Well, no, the diaphragm. Okay. And so... So what happens? So it moves down, and the pressure differential allows movement of air, so that's kind of like ventilation. And okay. then diffusion via kind of just the alveoli okay. into the blood. Allows okay. So when we move air up and down, is it just the diaphragm that functions, or is there other other? No, bit? there's I guess more accessory muscles, with I guess the rib cage. Okay. Um. And maybe the abdominal muscles. But Do you I think they're going to help with breathing in? Mm, maybe with expulsion. With breathing out. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Abdominal muscles not normally used for breathing, but can be used in forced expiration. Tell me about the ribs. What do they do? So, I guess just being there, they protect um, kind of vital organs. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess they're helpful for breathing in the fact that they can they're flexible enough to move kind of mm -hmm. out and in. Out and in. Sounds <laughs> like they sort of. They yeah, this? they well they increase the kind of their their ability to kind of increase the volume of okay kind of chest area. So how do they move? Uh, well, I mean they they got muscles on them. Associated probably, muscles, yeah. yeah. But in what manner do they move? In what what direction do they move? Are they spring outwards like this? So I guess when you breathe in, they kind of just just what go out. Okay, so so like that. No, well, no, no I guess, no, out, because that's not increasing the volume very Well, much. that would increase the volume, but everything would fall out the front, because oh, right. you don't separate at the front, do you? Um, does it, does it kind of like go in like that? What, like that? <laughs> no, I'm not, uh, well, um, I would assume if your diaphragm is working at the same time, yeah. it's kind of pushing it in a certain way. So we'd be pushing it down. So people usually talk about the ribs moving out and up. Have you heard that? Have you heard the expression about out and up and bucket um, handles or not? I don't think so. You don't. Okay. So let's assume the ribs are like this. So here you've got, my fingers are the ribs, and here's the spine at the back. Okay. Okay. So what 
ways can the ribs move? Well, I guess they can move out. How? Well, if there's... Oh, I see. If there's... So you put um, your hands together and just sort of do something that ribs might do. Oh, it's kind of separate more? They're pretty tight together. Put a finger between two ribs and breathe in. It doesn't really separate more. It doesn't... You, the bottom ones don't go down and the top ones up, do they? Yeah, so no, it doesn't true. do that. Okay, um, so it's a good thought, but they don't do that. Um, I guess they could just... Well, if they do move up, I guess you have to just increase volume in some sort of way. Yeah, they do. So... So you're moving the right way. What are you doing? You're... Oh, moving kind of that back. Okay. So does the back move? Does no, I guess. Right. So if the back doesn't move. In relation, but this would move forward at least. Or is it just like a turning motion? So I guess you're putting it up. Okay. And you're kind of pushing it out with some sort of. So, so the only movement that's possible for the ribs is at the back, because that's the only bit that isn't bony and solid. Right. Okay. They're fixed at the front. Okay. And they're fixed around the side and they're bony and they don't do this. I guess where the joint is, they're able to. Where the joint is, so they can rotate. Right, okay. Okay, how might that increase volume? The rotation? Yeah. If there's kind of like a space that they are able to occupy that isn't usually occupied. Okay. Or. So let's, um, let's start with someone who's standing upright. Do the ribs come out horizontally or do they slope? They slope. They slope. Yeah. Upwards or downwards? Downwards. Downwards, quite right. So you've got ribs that slope downwards right. to start with. And if you rotate those ribs, what happens to this diameter, the front to back diameter of the chest? If they rotate upwards, yeah. um, will increase because increase. they're sloping downwards. Yeah. I see, yeah. So the rotation allows the increase in the, in the diameter of the chest front to back and that's what supports it. Okay. But then I guess my question, my question is kind of there's the equivalent space when you're kind of rotating upwards, it like a volume. So, so what's happened is you don't forget you've got the diaphragm going down. So you've right, increased okay. your up and down length. Yes. So you've increased volume that way. And what this has done is it's increased the the cross-sectional area okay. of the chest up okay. until the point at which they're horizontal. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, okay. Okay. Dogs have a, a particular problem. On what's so that? Well, we weren't designed to be upright standing. We were designed right. to be quadrupeds. And if you're a dog, or any quadruped, your ribs are going to be horizontal to your spine. Okay. So movement of the ribs isn't going to help your chest diameter. Right, yeah. So why might the ribs be there? You touched on one point earlier, which was about protection from yeah. the chest. Okay, is there any other reason you might have ribs? Mm. Or might be able to move the ribs if it's useful? Is it to move them to kind of like more downwards to like help protect? That's, well, they're not going to protect the tummy, are they? The abdomen yeah. is going to go and protect them. Okay. Um, specifically for dogs? Or? Well, quadrupeds, anyone whose who's ribs are already at right angles to the spine. Okay. Babies, for that matter. I guess if you just move it up with that, do, do reduces you the volume. All oh, right. That's so you're dependent on what for breathing? You touched on that first. Increasing. Well, creating a pressure differential by increasing volume. By using the diaphragm. Diaphragm. So how does the diaphragm pull? What's it pull against? So it's it's like a dome. Correct. And it when it contracts, it kind of moves down, and so it increases volume that way. Um, but I at, at right angle, if there's no rotation. But just stay with the diaphragm for a minute. Right. Okay. Um, what what was the question? So what's the diaphragm pull on? What's what it attached to? Muscles oh, are right. attached to things. So What's I guess it? it must be the ribs. Correct. In some sort of way. And I guess the spine, somewhere below it, yeah. to allow it to pull it down. Exactly that. It's the spine and then the lower rim of the ribs. Okay. And so the ribs are there to be pulled against. So the muscles in the in the rib cage hold the rib cage steady while the diaphragm does the pumping. Okay. So the purpose of the of the rib cage is probably more to do with stabilisation. Right, of the chest because otherwise it would be a bit. Point. Okay, I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Different topic. This is a fairly old book now called The Spirit Level, okay. and this is looking at the differences in outcome in different societies. And I want you to look at this graph. So here is a graph. Uh, that is the infant mortality rates. This is the number of children that die per thousand births. Right. Okay. 
uh, it's comparing England and Wales with Sweden and it's comparing low and high social classes and single mothers. Okay. So have a look at that for a moment and then I just want you to, to make me a couple of comments on anything that you see in that that you find interesting. Well firstly, um, single mothers are higher than any kind of, even without a, a so Apart single mothers have a higher in infant mortality death, rate yeah. than any other group. Yeah. And and so as you get as you increase in social class, there's a decrease in infant mortality, which is fairly obvious. Except that Sweden doesn't seem to kind of follow that trend. Okay. In relation in relation to England. And so Wales. so tell me about Sweden then. It's a nice country. Well, um, tell me what that data tells you about Sweden. <laughs> it is a nice country, but that's not what that's. <laughs> um, well, there's not like a correlation that. It seems like it's more kind of like evenly distributed. More evenly distributed, yes. Um, it fluctuates a bit, it fluctuates but it seems bit. like single mothers are still the highest. Yeah. But not as kind of obviously as England and Wales. Anything else you'd say compared to England? Um, from from this graph yeah. specifically. Um, I mean, they're lower in every regard they're lower in every regard right yeah okay so here we've got a situation where we seem to be doing very badly against other countries like Sweden right. so what sort of factors what would what would you want to do well, to try and correct that I mean I guess from this it's social class that seems to be it is in the UK but it's not in Sweden right yeah um, well I guess you'd have to look at their kind of like policies but if Sweden is more of a equal kind of country, or it helps with with, I guess is it mainly um, monetary issues, mainly that correlates to social class. Um, I guess what would we change in this country is is that the question? Or well, I guess it is. It's just trying, I suppose, to get your reflections on whether that is surprising, whether that is worrying. And I think you're touching on exactly the right things. What is it that we might think about when we're, we're, we're wanting to do that? Yeah. I mean, it is worrying, definitely. And I guess um, you would have to look at the differences in how we kind of handle these situations. If it's a fact of kind of like money distribution in the population, um, it obviously has a massive effect in, on infant mortality. And I'm guessing more health-related issues. Um, why that might be the case, I mean, maybe diet, maybe... Yeah, um, yeah. there could be a number of factors. Other correlates to yeah. that, yeah. Um, and this book is trying to, to give the suggestion that actually it's about unequal societies, that Sweden has a much less of a differential between the most wealthy and the most poor. Right, and, and is that as you say, looks after income, money and... Yeah. and, and, and income right. and support and, right, and yeah. nursery care and child care and back to work and all those other things in and that particular example. But there I mean, definitely there should be an improvement. If we're going to compare it to Sweden, it's... Yeah. it's yeah. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Uh, so, Patrick, I've uh, got quizzed on uh, respiratory physiology. Um, and in my head, I was going to start off about the ribs and the movement of the ribs, and he set off about the diaphragm, which is fine. It was perfectly within the question, and I had to sort of pull him back to where I wanted to ask him the question. Um, and uh, again, he struggled with that, as, as many people would do. It's not surprising uh, that he had areas of that where he found it, he wasn't quite sure what I was getting at, or he didn't quite, he hadn't thought about it. He hadn't thought about how the ribs move in breathing. So he worked his way through that pretty well. I thought uh, we talked, uh, I gave him some clues. He tried one or two daft ideas, which is absolutely fine. Um, and we expect that in uh, people. Uh, and again, he got there, he kept at it, and he answered that fine in the end. Uh, in terms of the graph interpretation, good analysis. Uh, one or two things that he uh, didn't pick up on immediately, the difference between Sweden and the UK in that particular graph, but we could use one of any. But he stayed with it, he stayed calm, he kept answering the questions, he kept referring back to it. So again, a good interview.